Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that looks looks actually pretty nice. This thing weighs no less than I would say twenty-five pounds. This is what I have to do to get this thing up there. What's up guys and welcome back to the Motor Gumption YouTube channel and today you guys are going to be going along with me on the journey of the Turbo FC1 project. Now, if you guys are like, why is he turboing an FC1? Well, to me, I love to tinker and to me this is a evolving science project. If I wanted to start off with something easy with a plethora of aftermarket support, I would have went with the Hayabusa. But to me, I love doing what I do. I love learning, taking things apart, fixing it. It's what I do. So in this episode, I have a compilation, all right, of videos from multiple days of me working on this bike, going through the trials and tribulations of actually turboing it. So if you guys see me with multiple sets of clothes on, it's because it's multiple days in the garage. Now, not all bikes need to go through the steps that I did to actually turbo. Like some bikes come from factory a little more equipped uh, fuel system wise. So they might have a heavier duty uh, fuel pump. They might have four or eight injectors rather than the four injectors like my FC1. Um, a little bit more room to mount things and for cooling pipe or uh, charge pipes, you know, like the ZX14 or Hayabusa. But like I said, I like to tinker. I like science projects and that's what I'm doing. So with it being cold in winter, not riding any, I'm doing what I do best and tinkering. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, the footage and you know come along the journey with me. I hope to have some uh, great track footage of this thing once we get this uh, puppy running. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Yeah. Oh yeah that looks looks actually pretty nice. Now I will probably be either upgrading or modifying this um, wastegate actuator. It's not a small turbo as you can see. That's going on the bike. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount these two together. We're gonna throw it on the bike and then I'll start running oil feed. And uh, yeah. Now I will probably just be getting a um, turbo blanket on this. I was gonna Cerakote this as well, ceramic coat it, but um, maybe another time. For right now we don't need it. But that looks, whoo. It looks pretty. All right, let's get it on, guys. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start installing the uh, timing cover right here. But this one is now fitted with a scavenger oil pump. So what this guy does is it connects to this bolt right here. It uses that actual part, like so, to go ahead and spin. And this, ha this has a uh, spur gear system in there. What it does is it creates a um, suction that will pull uh, oil from the, tur the turbo uh, drip tank and then put it back in here. Since, since the turbo is gonna be low enough where it can't actually drain by gravity into the oil, um, the pan, we have to solve it with other means. Well, I was able to find four. Uh, they'll be good for now. What I'm gonna do is just do finger tight. Um, this one's actually a little damaged on the head. I, I remember that I took two off of this bike so I can use on the raffle bike, if I remember correctly. So I'm missing some, I have to find them. It's really gonna bug me. Anyway, so I have to drain the oil because the oil level is probably up to right here, realistically right now, because all the oil's down and not in the engine or you know, circulating, but this hole right here in the engine uh, becomes an oil feed for the turbo. There'll be a banjo bolt that goes here and a line that runs to the turbo, and that's the oil feed. So the oil in this is not, like, it's not bad, but I'm gonna have to take it out because of that. It's gonna be leaking everywhere if I undo that bolt. Well, it looks like the oil is actually pretty dang good. That looks pretty clean to me actually coming out. So I take that kind of oil any day. Especially for how much crap I put it through, which, I mean, still ain't that bad. All right, next we will get the cooling out. Heck yeah, brother. So, there'll probably be little to nothing coming out until I undo the radiator cap. Let's check it out. There'll be some coming out. Oh, yeah. I do have it undone. Look how clean it is. Too bad it's no good now. 
Oh well, I'll clean the system out. Distilled water, let it warm up, clean it, and go from there. All right, so I did have the turbo on, <clears throat> but I came across two issues, all right? Not big ones, they're easily fixed, but just time consuming to having to take this stuff off. So the um, oil filter on the motorcycle was actually hitting and bottoming, bottoming this out. So what happened was, is that I wasn't able to actually torque down the, um, the nuts to actually seat the exhaust properly. So I had to take off the turbo um, set up right here and adjust these slightly. The only part is I can't move these too much because then where the piping is supposed to mount here will be off. So what I'm gonna do is just move it a little bit and then see if there's an adjustment that needs to be made here. It might be off a little bit, so I'll just move it back up until the point where I don't make contact with the oil filter. The good thing is that this is mounted to the engine, so is the oil filter, so they move in sync. It's not like they're gonna hit later on because of movement. The other thing was, and I'm actually kind of bummed out about this one, because I really, really, really wanted to keep my center stand. I like that it's a sport touring bike, it's, a, it's on a center stand. It'd be the funniest thing to show up at the drag strip with the center stand still on it and running eights, okay? Eights is really the goal for my bike here. Um, even if it's a high eight, I'd be happy with it, which is actually very capable. Um, a better rider with my the supercharged setup could easily go probably a nine four, um, maybe even a nine three. But I'm just I don't have that clutch hand, guys. I don't go to the drag strip much. Much I'd like to change that. But anyways, so I really wanted to keep the center stand. It's probably not going to happen because the way the exhaust system is built. Not a bad thing. I might have it where. I don't know. I might be able to build something where I can still keep the center stand and have the exhaust on there. Anyways, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and mount that back up. You guys don't need to see me turning some bolts and putting that on there, it's actually kind of stressful. Anyways, and then removing the center stand. The only issue is, is I don't have actual motorcycle stands where I can keep this thing up in the air like this. So, I'm in a pinch. I'm in a pinch, guys. Oh boy, now would you look at that. <clears throat> so, here is the wastegate, all right, and now there's no more contact right there. We can actually see some daylight, or some light through it. Now, if you're curious about the, uh, the wastegate, it is an off-brand, I'll show you here. It's called a Kinugua. Anyways, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Next, what we're next going to do is we're gonna remove the kickstand or the uh, center stand, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw the exhaust on, and possibly the intercooler. And, I mean, it's getting kinda late, so I'm gonna have to stop here shortly. So far, not bad progress. I can tell you one thing is, there's gonna be, um, yeah, there's gonna be some clearancing issues probably. Not that it will touch, but it's gonna be dang close. Actually, nope. That's stock height. Well, it's lowered, but it's not strapped. So, as you can see, it's not gonna touch. That's not bad. Hey, got a big old heavy spring, and this is off. Hey, you know what this is? This is weight reduction. It doesn't really weigh too much, and it's not like I need the reduction. I don't mind having a heavy bike. That's why I'm turbocharging it. Anyways, all right, so let's put the exhaust on, and, uh, Possibly the intercooler as well. Oh yeah, would you look at that. So now we have the exhaust on. It's not much, and it's actually a good, a good good girth there for to let that exhaust out. Man, about, it's about a two and a half inch pipe. I guess it would help if I turned it on, huh? And zeroed it out. And put it on inches. We don't do that funky stuff around here. Yeah, two and a half inches. I know what that girth feels like, trust me. <laughs> and to uh, tighten down, tighten down the exhaust bolts, tighten down the manifold bolt, and then I need to do some, uh, some coolant plumbing there. And then we're gonna go ahead and push this back, get that mounted to the stock bracket right there. Pushes the radiator back like so. It's not breaking, just something's clipping. And then we're gonna go ahead and try to get that uh, that intercooler in there. So, all right, so we're back in the garage. It is a new day. Um, I did get a haircut and trim up a little bit, but I 
had to stop working on the bike that night because I was on running on fumes. And anyways, so we do have the intercooler on. We have the piping. We have the turbo. All right, so here's what we're looking at, guys. So it's going to be, you could say it's full exhaust. I mean, it's still pretty much an open pipe, but it does, you know, help quiet things up. I mean, essentially a uh, turbo is an exhaust itself. But we have everything hooked up. I don't have matching bolts here because I had to do some stuff for it to actually work. I will get matching bolts later on, not a big deal. But this thing is sturdy as can be. And then here is the actual side where we have our cold side. Um, I will have to do some other modifications, but um, we have it in here and on. So that is that. The next thing is going to be getting the throttle bodies on and the intake and then doing my fuel system, which actually will be uh, touching up on that today. The next thing I'm going to do is tackle the fuel system. Don't mind my messy garage. I'm still, I clean up as I go most of the time. <laughs> Not really. Anyway, so here's the fuel system for my fuel tank. Um, I did do some modifications already. Things are going to be, ah. Things are going to be changed up a little bit from my system, but don't mind that little hole right there. That's for the return. Anyways, I checked out the fuel pump system already because I will be changing out my fuel pumps. Um, you guys already know what the fuel system looks like and how to take it out. Um, I've showed you that before. Anyways, but here is that part off, and you go in here. Yes, I've already done the hard stuff, and you know. That little guy right there will support up to uh, 200 horsepower. Um, well, it'll support over 200 horsepower as long as you have um, the regulator capped off and allows full pressure. But these things are actually pretty nice, and that's good condition fuel pump. Anyways, so what we're going to do is, let me go ahead and show my face. I know you guys love that. Anyways, to get away from that first person uh, view for a little bit. Anyways, so we're going to install this bigger fuel pump, and as you can tell here, there is a quite a big difference. This is a 225 liter per hour fuel pump because it can't fit there. That fuel pump does not fit in that housing. Even then, it would not allow it to seat because it's a longer fuel pump. So, as you can tell. So, I will be figuring out a way to clamp this down to here. Um, that is basically the, the port that the fuel goes into the... Um, the engine so um yeah and i got a few things i can work with for now i will most likely be getting more fittings some fuel so i know it's a little bit of a mess <clears throat> what i did was i had to take it all apart figure out how i'm gonna get uh, the bigger fuel pump to sit there and stay in its housing so i did a little bit of jerry rigging all right so it's not a bad thing i mean i've seen some crazy setups on fuel pumps intakes and all that on performance cars and motorcycles so it's not that big of a deal i'm not doing it's not horrible okay so anyways here's what i got all right so that's what that's going to look like with the fuel pump in there we got one zip tie holding it in so far i did make a hat that's going to go around this circumference here and i believe it's supposed to go oh yeah that's going to go like so because that's going to be the opening right here where the fuel line is going to go through then i have these slots on all four corners or four sides that's going to be tied into these each mounting points that the uh, stock fuel assembly would like here so then we got the zip ties in and this will hold it i mean this thing is pretty sturdy it's not going anywhere so then we're going to do the hose all right on here and it's going to have some a in fittings that i specifically bought for this so let's um, attach them together all right so this is the very basic <sighs> rudimentary setup i mean it's not the best but it does work so like i said these right here will hold uh this plate down forcing the fuel pump to stay then we have some an fittings here some uh constant tension clamps which i mean like i said this is just for now all right i have the tank out and well let's see if it fits i did have to maneuver a tad bit but i mean other than that you push in these clamps just a tad and it goes right in oh yeah and you have to tuck yes we're tucking sacks here the filter sack
voila. So as I'm walking around the hardware store, I forget that I had um, all these little things rattling off in my uh, jacket. Anyway, so like I said, I cleaned up all of the wiring for the most part. Like I said, it's most of it's coming out anyways, so not a big deal. But I'm not proud of how many zip ties I had on the bike to keep wiring in order, but check this out. If I can get them all out of my pocket in one. <laughs> There's actually a few I've already thrown away into the trash can. But uh, yeah, it's a good little hoard there. Yeah, I think that might be able to hold a little bit of boost. I mean, we do have the six studs and bolts, which are really small actually, but this should, uh, this should uh, hold it down pretty nicely. Yeah. Hopefully there's a good amount of clearance here. I'm still deciding on where I want to put the ECU, but most likely the ECU will be right about here since there's a lot less stuff going on with this new system. All right, well, here she is as she sits with the tank on. It, it did take a little bit of time to get this tank on. The reason why is because there's, there's not a lot of room. I actually didn't end up putting the uh, ECU directly underneath the tank. I actually had to put the old Sheila right there and then route the, uh, the ECU wires around the side of the intake and throttle body system. So there's that. Anyways, um, as far as today, I'm gonna call it a day and I'll get back out here tomorrow and finish it up. As far as all we need is one line, two lines, three lines, and then the drip tank and add fluids. Ah, good morning guys, and I mean good mornings because it's 1.30 a.m. right now, and I finally got my free time to come in the garage, clean the house a little bit, and, oh, clean my garage too. If you can see that I kind of organized some stuff over there on my workbench, especially my tools. Um, I know it's a lot of tools and it looks a little cluttered, but I know where everything's kind of at. These are, um, here's the, the items that we need to complete the turbo installation now it's very simple just uh, oh reason why is because I had to wait for some crush washers which these are supposed to be copper but soft aluminum will work a new gasket some more copper crush washers and I wasn't really impressed with these anyway I did have a modified bracket for my fairing that way I can keep my S style fairings uh, the newly painted uh, drip tank for the turbo underneath. If you guys haven't noticed, here is my oil of choice for now. This right here, 2.5 gallons of it cost me, uh, what was it, $55, okay? Now, I'm gonna be, this is Rotella T6, guys. All right, so if you guys don't know about this, look it up. Plenty of people have used this uh, on their turbo motorcycles, turbo cars. Um, I would look at the, before you bash on me, okay? I would look at the specs on this engine oil and uh, just go ahead and read through that. It meets and exceeds a lot of uh, areas, especially for turbo engines. It's used in diesel trucks, which, you know, diesel, high compression, lots of load, lots of temperature, and they use these in rigs. So, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of miles of heat, okay, that this is seeing. Um, not only that though, they do not use friction additives in this. So this is safe for your wet clutches. There you go. Also, Rotella T6, or Shell, I should say, Shell actually um, answered a question on their website about using this particular engine oil in motorcycles. And they answered it with great detail. And the reason why is yes, this will work and in other applications. Um, but the main thing is, guys, is it's super cheap, okay? It, this is nothing new. I'm not pioneering this journey here. Uh, this has already been proven by many Turbo Hayabusa fellers out there, all right? So I'm just kind of uh, piggybacking on their research and their um, guinea pigging, guinea piggying, guinea there, guinea pig. Anyways, I'm just piggybacking on what they've learned and what they've done because it works and it's cheap. So, I mean, 2,000 miles on the on the system, and I can feel comfortable changing the oil without actually spending many uh, dollars on it. I mean, because for the Yamalu Premium Full Synthetic, it's $11 a quart. 2.5 gallons, $55. 
$11 a quart. You see the difference there? And it meets and exceeds what we need. So, and we'll put some of this stuff in. So, I still haven't decided if I'm even gonna put this in and just take it to the dyno on distilled water. Um, actually, water is the best heat transfer um, for coolant systems, but you can't run it or you'll have some corrosion. The fact is, is I won't be running it long before taking it apart, and this is $23, $24 per. So it'd be kind of a waste. So anyways, let's get to it, guys. Put on the drip tank because when we, I'm gonna go ahead and prime the turbo, and that way we can have some lubrication upon startup. This is gonna suck. Jeez Louise. All right, so clearance issues here. This top bolt or this first bolt, easy to get to. You know, I can have enough room while this is actually still in the bike or on the bike. The second one, not so much. So, I went ahead and took off the whole turbo system here, and the bike is now turboless again. So I struggled with that one bolt for about 20 minutes and said, screw it, I'm taking off the whole thing. You know what, live and learn. So now we know that there are steps to this puzzle and you need to take them in order to get everything correct. Anyway, next thing I need to do is destroy a tool because this is too long. To hey, look what I got. So let's go ahead and uh, tighten this bad boy down. That's enough room in there. Yep, just, just barely. All right, so we're gonna keep on doing this and we'll get it uh, installed. And she's on. So let's go ahead, take this and throw it over there. This thing weighs no less than, I would say, 25 pounds. Ooh. This is what I have to do to get this thing up there. You have to one hand it. Well, I mean, you can even. Oh. Anyways, all right, here we go. All right. Let's just tighten these bolts down, put everything back together, and finally maybe we can get those lines in. Oh, gosh dang. All right, let's continue, guys. There's still oil in it. Found my oil pan. On the list, we're gonna go ahead and fit up the gauge cluster and the whole front fairing. The only issue is, is I did measure this and um, anything in purple has to be trimmed. So it's gonna be, it's making contact with the uh, silicone boost pipe right about here. So, I mean, it's only pushing it in a little bit. I think it'd be fine, but I don't want vibration to slowly start cutting this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna trim this up with a Dremel and a sharp, sharp carbide bit, so that way it's really clean. All right, fellers, it's getting close to my work time. It is 7.07 .07 in the morning. So I'm gonna go take a shower and get ready for work. It's been a long night, but you know what? It was worth it. So if you look here, we have everything on the bike. Just a few things I need to touch up, like I need to put this bolt, I need to get this lined up a little better. And then uh, I need to fabricate some washers or some bushings, some spacers for the radiator caps so I can cover that still. But other than that, it's ready to go. She is a beaut. So if you look here, 
we have the turbo all mounted, all the body panels on, and uh, she's ready to fire up. I will not be running it all right today after work, but I will start it to let it warm up and cycle, heat cycle, see how hot it gets and everything, and then we'll go from there and hopefully get it on the dyno this weekend, maybe early next week. I have to make an appointment. But I will see you guys here in a little bit.